Aqua ni natasawas minikisu masmata. Onankweyoni. Hello, my name is Andre Strong Bearheart from the uh, Nipmuc Nation. I'm the creative director of No Loose Braids, also a, a resident artist for the Okiteyu Cultural Center in Western Mass. Our focus is to have cultural revitalization and cultural preservation. And so one of those ways that we do that is continuously building sites like this. Here today, we're creating like a traditional home site. Right behind me, we have a hide rack. Basically, we're gonna be flushing a hide tomorrow and racking it up. And we have a double tripod rack, which we would have cooked larger game on. Also over here, double Y rack, which we would have cooked fish and things like that on. And so we're gonna cook the fish here. We put the fish net right next to it. And this little mini machine back here is basically a tree that we fall, we burn it out and dig it out. It's a canoe. It usually takes uh, between seven and 10 days to burn out a machine. During that time, we'll be cooking, so we'll be rendering bear fat, doing all sorts of things off of the fire, making use of it. And the smoke would be smoking our skins. Uh, we got a deer skin over there. We're gonna put on that rack tomorrow, rack it up. It's just really important that we continue creating sites like this, but more than that, highlighting the issues and how hard it is to create sites like this. And these come from our cedar Cedars swamps. Cedar is useful, Dad. We started that process last year in Douglas Cedar Swamp. We cleared out some section of this swamp, and when we went back there this year, we, we documented there was some small cedar saplings that had grown because the sunlight could hit it, you know? it's. Not rocket science, you know. In no way has it ever made sense to let all the dead lay on the floor so that nothing else can grow. So yeah, we sink them. It preserves them. We sink them in the fall, which can be cold, and then pulling them up in the spring, which oh, can be cold. <laughs> <laughs> After the wars, you know, we were fractured in some pretty, pretty horrific ways, and now uh, our people have have kept a lot, but we've lost a lot as well. One of the issues that we're having is the state of these cedar swamps. One of the biggest problems that we have is uh, access. You got DCR and you got these, these parks gatekeeping what we need to harvest, what we have harvested for thousands of years here. It's really problematic when we get to these places and they have the, the pathways chained up and basically say that, that we have to go through a process to be able to get in there. No, we don't. It's important to acknowledge that the Stockbridge Munsee are out here and it's a sister tribe of ours. We've always come into each other's spaces in a good way. We're at a point in you know, this paradigm shift that we need to work together. And if we're not working together, then we're not gonna get very far. Being able to show and have the space to be able to show my nephew these ways is more meaningful than me just being present doing these things because the way that we always did things was in generations. So these cedar swamps that we're trying to save, I know that I'm not gonna be able to harvest the poles that I need to build the, the homes that we need to build within my lifetime. He might not either, but his kids will. And so it's really important that he's digesting what he needs to on a day-to-day -day basis as we go through the struggles, the hardships, the, the gatekeepers, the prejudice. The way I see it, we're just kind of waking up out of this fracture from that uh, assimilation and colonization 400 years ago. And we're really stepping into a really important paradigm right now. And, uh, you know, for those who are still here, it's really important that we're in there doing what we need to do for uh, cultural revitalization and the preservation of it. It's really important. <laughs>